Well, here we are. Super Bowl Sunday. It is here. But that's not what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to talk about that later on tonight. What we are going to talk about right now, though, is college basketball because this week has been hectic. This week has been crazy. This week has been bizarre. And just today, we found out that there's more cancellations. Poor Michigan. Um, the SEC is getting canceled games, too. Baylor, you know, they basically, you know, had their games canceled throughout the week. They've been having some games canceled as well. So a bunch of cancellations. Michigan's missed, like, what, five games? Now this will be the fifth game that they'll be missing. You know, that'll be some of the games next week. It won't be the Wisconsin game, though. But, um, yeah, don't, don't think, because I haven't really talked about it all that much, that Corona is not beating up college basketball. It is beating up college basketball. It's beating it up bad. It is kind of rough, let me tell you that much. Um, let's talk about the games from this week. Pretty sloppy Monday night, you know, for Texas Tech. Oklahoma, pretty sloppy game. Um, I don't know what to say about the Longhorns this week. It it might have been bound to happen, but at the same time, it's rather disappointing. You know, did not even put up much of a fight against Baylor. And then Saturday, despite, you know, holding Cade kind of kept down, you, we basically kept him in check all game until we had to go to two overtimes with them. We had to go to two dope times to Oklahoma State. Now, I know there's supposed to be. There's actually an appeal or something like that for Oklahoma State because apparently they're not eligible for the tournament right now. I don't know why. don't know how. Um, but they should be in. This te Oklahoma State's win against Texas should put them into the tournament. That, that, that definitely clinches them a spot right there. They have, you know, just enough wins, and they are in the thick of things. You know, even though they're behind Baylor. They're in the thick of things right now in the Big 12. But Baylor's still on top. Baylor's still undefeated. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, you know, it's been a weird week for some other teams, unfortunately. Um, Purdue lost to Maryland on Tuesday. Did they bounce back against Northwestern? Tennessee loses to Ole Miss. And then... Proceeds to thump Kentucky. Kentucky is pretty much out of the tournament at this point. No reason to talk about Kentucky. Uh, you know, again, Michigan played already this week. Uh, you know, Iowa, they got swept by Indiana. They lost to Ohio State, too. Bad defense. Just awful, awful defense by the Hawkeyes in both of these games. You know, Ohio State, you know, I, I expected Ohio State to keep up with Iowa. But I didn't expect, you know, this type of performance. I mean, yeah, Garza's going to go off and do his thing. But the rest of the team, you know, at times, feels like they haven't stepped up to the plate. My team of the week is Illinois. The Illinois Fighting Illini. Now, people are saying now that they are, you know, like a 2C, potentially a 1C. Some people have said that. I've seen some projections where they said that Illinois is a two seed, and they have done some good things. This is a physical team. Io Dawsonu, Kofi Coburn, what a what a what a combination! You know what a combination these two have. And I know we've been on and off about the whole Illinois basketball thing. You know, topic. You know, considering what the past ten weeks have been like, the past three months have been like on this channel. <laughs> um, but Illinois. They have done some damn good stuff. I mean, Iowa with a triple double on Saturday against Wisconsin. You know, they, they they get a close win against Indiana, and then they just just bombard Wisconsin with you know great defensive play. These two guys getting along on offense, sharing the ball, getting rebounds. I mean, Wisconsin was ice cold from three. You know, I mean, it's just like, man, Illinois is looking like a very good team. Illinois is coming to their own by the time, you know, we're getting close to March. We're getting closer and closer. And teams that want to, to stake their claim, that want to stake their claim, that want to be a champion, they're staking their claim now. 
and Illinois sticking their claim. Ohio State, too. Again, that's just a testament, again, to how the Big Ten has been this year. Very tough, very strong, very physical, a very, very good conference. Very good conference this year. At yeah, Wisconsin, as far as they go, they have been inconsistent all season long. You know, they split with Penn State, right? Yeah, they split with Penn State, then they go out and lose to Illinois. You can't have this. You cannot have this. One of them, I mean, it's just bizarre. One of the most bizarre, I mean, there's just the sheer amount of upset this week that were bizarre. Where you get Tech, loses to Pittsburgh, you know, Houston, loses to last place East Carolina, does not get the Gonzaga game. We were we were robbed of a Gonzaga game, a Gonzaga-Houston game. We didn't get that. Instead, Houston scheduled our Lady of the Lake. I don't even know what that team is. Is that, is that a real team? It might be an NIAA team or something like that. You know, South Carolina beats Florida. Florida had their games, you know, for the next week postponed, I believe. Uh, just bizarre. St. John's, somehow. You know, they beat they they beat Villanova. I don't know how, but they did it. It doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense. Georgetown also beat Creighton. And, and did Georgetown proceed to lose to Villanova? You know, so weird stuff's been going on throughout the week. You know, speaking of Gonzaga, they were down against Pacific for a little bit. But then they came back and, you know, it was, you know, very easy. They were down at halftime at a point. I don't know. I don't know. It didn't even seem like, I don't know. Some people have said that Gonzaga's bored. But that's really because of what the WCC schedule has been like. You know, they scaled back the conference schedule to 16 games to accommodate Gonzaga. To give Gonzaga a fair advantage. To give Gonzaga more non-conference opportunities, even though, you know, they they mostly, like 85% of their conference schedule, their non-conference schedule is tough. The other 15%, I've seen black schools on there, which is not a good recipe for getting W's. You know, not a good recipe for building a resume, but it, but apparently that doesn't matter. You know, schools are not good, and then you know the rest of the schedule is filled with like Kentucky's, Kansas's. Baylor's, you know, stuff like that, Michigan's, Wisconsin's, you know, the rest of Gonzaga's schedule is filled with that in a non-conference before the 16 games, so who knows if they're going to make up some of these games or not, you know, again, I mean, COVID has been, ra has been ravaging, ravaging college basketball, it's been going crazy out there, and surprisingly enough, <sighs> Missouri, I know Missouri, another team that's very inconsistent. They, they beat Alabama for the for Alabama's first loss in the ACC play. You know they lost to Oklahoma last Saturday, and they lose to Missouri. You know, I mean Missouri basically was blowing them out, but then they let them come back twice. You cannot have that. You cannot have that at all. You know I was wondering, you know like, hey, this Missouri team looks pretty interesting, but they are inconsistent too. Kansas is going to be out of the top 25, of course. You know, they lost to West Virginia. They looked awful out there. They looked rough. It was a rough time on offense. Yeah, they scored 79 points, but they looked rough out there against West Virginia. Goes to show you how good West Virginia is. And then Drake would proceed to lose today to Valpo. So they are no longer undefeated. They'll probably drop out the top 25 themselves, which is rather unfortunate. But it is what it is. Um, oh, yeah, USC beat UCLA. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know why. But USC blew them out pretty much. Crazy stuff right there, right? Crazy stuff. But, yeah, we are, what, five weeks away now? Selection Sunday, five whole weeks away from Selection Sunday, and you know, who knows? There's a lot of things that need to happen. There's a lot of things that need to be sorted out. We don't know if there's going to be conference tournaments or not. Um, even though there probably should be, there probably should not be conference tournaments right now. We don't know who's we don't know who's going to be the number one seeds. The other two number one seeds. We know who the first two seeds, the first two number one seeds are: Gonzaga, Baylor. The question is about that. So who's going to be overall number one? I'm thinking Baylor will be the overall number one, but you never know. 
And, you know, who's going who's gonna to come out of some of these conferences? You know, it's Pac-12. Big Cut of Quiet. <sighs> ACC Big Cut of Quiet. You know, North Carolina saved themselves last night against Duke. But um, who's going to cut out the ACC? Who's going who's gonna to get that conference sorted out? We know about the Big 12. We know about the Big 10. And maybe the Big East as well. But the SEC has been kind of weird. You know, Alabama is leading the SEC clearly, and they are in front of everybody right now. But, you know, ACC, Pac-12, the Americans been a little weird. You know, Wichita State's creeping back up. You know, Houston has had some difficulties at times. As we've seen with the whole East Carolina thing, you don't lose the last place team in your conference like that. They, they, just, they just let them, you know, just let them shoot all over them. But yeah, that'll pretty much do it. And I'll see you guys in a couple of hours for the recap of the Super Bowl. Man, I'm going to be sad. <laughs>